Hello everybody! Always useful to know how to do PPFs properly and how to draw them. There are four different ways in which you might need to draw and illustrate PPFs and four different things you may need to show on a PPF. That's what I'm going to focus on in this video. Right, let's start by showing increasing opportunity cost on a PPF, something that's asked very commonly in the exam. The important thing is to get the labels right. Now, PPFs can be used in micro and in macro. In micro, uh, you just have to pick two different goods or services that you put on the axis to show that a choice is being made in production. For macro, you've got to be more specific. In macro, there are two ways of doing the labels. You do capital and consumer, that's one option, or you can do goods and services, that's a second option. Both options there are macro-based labels for PPFs. The other specific goods and services you may choose make it a micro diagram. Okay. All four, I'm just going to do capital and consumer. So these are basically macro-based PPFs, but they can still be used to show these four different things. So let's get going and label the y-axis with capital and label the x-axis with consumer. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Increasing opportunity cost PPF is going to be concave. So it's going to look something like that. And label it, you must label it PPF. All right? Now, we want to show increasing opportunity cost. The way you do it is you increase the production of one thing. I always take whatever's on the x-axis, so increase the production of consumer goods by a constant figure each time. So keep increasing. I'm going to do by 15 units each time. And then on the y-axis, just show how we're giving more and more up of capital goods in the process. All right? So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to assume that that's 15 consumer goods. And they're going to increase each time by 15. So 30, 45, and 60. Okay, so I've got a 15 unit increase each time. And then just show how we're giving up more and more uh, capital goods each time. So I'm just making up these figures, you can do the same thing. As long as you're showing increasing opportunity cost as we're increasing the production of consumer goods, you've done the job. So maybe the first increase was 95 to 90, the second increase was 90 to 75, and the third increase was 75 to uh, 45, something along those lines. Alright, we'll do the job. You've got increasing opportunity cost being shown there. Fine. To make it even better, you can actually label the points. So we started at A, we then went to B, we then went to C, we then went to D. So actually labeling the points on the PPF and using arrows to show they were moving along from each letter to the next letter, okay? So that's how you do that. Uh, very good if you're able to do that in an exam if asked. That's nice and detailed for you. You might be asked to show efficiency. There aren't many efficiencies we can actually show on a PPF, but there are some important ones. So same labeling, capital and consumer. <coughs> uh, again, we'll draw our concave PPF and label it like that. We can show two definite efficiencies on a PPF. We can show productive efficiency and productive inefficiency. So if I take point A, any point inside the PPF is productive inefficiency. So that's how you do that. Any point inside you can prove that's productively inefficient, not maximizing the use of scarce resources in the economy. Whereas any point on the curve, therefore by definition, must be productive efficiency. So point B is productive efficiency. Point B is also Pareto efficiency, all right? Well, we can't produce one more unit of one good without sacrificing uh, a unit of the other good, okay? So if that's the case, then we must have Pareto efficiency. You can't increase the production of one without reducing production of the other. So we can show uh, on the curve productive efficiency and Pareto efficiency. Inside the curve, we can show productive inefficiency and Pareto inefficiency. Okay, so point A, both inefficiencies, point B, both efficiencies. We can't show allocative efficiency on a PPF. It depends what consumer demand is. We can also show shifts of the PPF. So again, let's label capital and consumer. So if you need to show that the quantity and the quality of factors of production in an economy is increased, and you want to show how the PPF will shift outwards, increasing the possibilities of producing uh, both capital and consumer goods in greater quantity than before, 
the way to do it is again draw a concave PPF like this, PPF1 we'll call it, and simply shift it out to PPF2. And what you might want to show at the same time is how previously you were at point A as an economy and now you're able to move to point B and in doing so we can produce more of both consumer goods and capital goods. Okay, so a little shift like that. If you want to draw a little arrow, you can do that. That's how you shift the PPF when there is an increase in the quantity and quality of factors of production in an economy. What about non-parallel shifts? So you might have, it's an improvement in technology maybe, which only favours uh, the increase in capital goods. Maybe that's what the, uh, the shift is favouring purely. There is going to be no impact on the production of consumer goods, only uh, an improvement in the production of capital goods. So for whatever reason that's happening, how do you show that on a PPF? Well again, you label your axis, capital and consumer, and you start with an initial PPF, and we can call that, uh, I'll leave it here this time, PPF1. So if the shift purely favours capital goods, well, there's going to be an increase there, but then we are going to uh, draw it so that we come back to the same quantity of consumer goods on the axis here. All right, so the curve is going to emanate from this initial one and then start to widen out to show an increase in capital goods. So the way to do it is you start here and then you simply widen out like that. And we can call this PPF2. All right, so if ever you get a situation where you need to show how a shift is favouring one or the other, then this is how you do it. All right? And if you want to draw the arrow, you can draw the arrow like such. Right, always do your checklist. For PPFs, it's super important that you label the axis right. From experience, that's the biggest mistake students make. They mess up the labelling on the axis, and they also forget to actually label the curves. That's another very common mistake. So we can't check equilibria, but we can still do our ACE diagram without the equilibria. We have labelled axes, we've labelled curves. Thanks for watching, guys. This is very, very useful. Learn it, practice it, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.